In this video I will tell you how I set up my Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II and what kind of settings I use when I do photography. Hi there, I'm Peter Forsgaard, an Olympus visionary from Helsinki, Finland. And before we get into the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II menu system and my settings, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to get noticed when I post videos online, please hit that bell also. I usually post videos on Tuesdays and Fridays. My channel is all about you getting to be a better photographer. I like very much that I can customize my camera. In this video, I will share my settings that I use for photography. And remember, when I share my settings, I have figured out it for my type of image making. You might have a little different way, but if this video helps you to figure out the settings because the menu system in Olympus camera is quite, you know, huge and you can get lost in the menus if you don't know where the things are. Even I sometimes think that, hey, wait a minute, I need to do this and that and I'll get lost in the menus even though I fill around it with quite a lot so I can understand. So I hope this video helps you to figure out best settings for you. But let's dive in. The first decision you need to make is to if you want to shoot RAW or JPEGs. And if you shoot only JPEGs, this first set of uh, settings can be ignored because it's going to affect the JPEG. And the JPEG that comes out of Olympus cameras as it is, with the default settings, is one of the best on the market. So you get excellent quality on JPEGs. And the first set of settings helps you to make a perfect exposure every time. By following the next settings, it will be very easy for you to expose it to the right so that the data that is collected by the sensor is maximum and the image quality is the best you can get from this camera. Actually I have made a video about this first set of settings two and a half years ago it's, and it's one of my most popular videos and you can watch it there. Okay and let's go to see the first set of settings. You can set up your Olympus so that on the EVF and on the LCD you see where your image might be overexposed or underexposed. The red color on the LCD or EVF tells you that that part of the image is overexposed and blue color tells you that it is underexposed. But this needs to be set up first. It's not as a default setting in your Olympus, which I don't understand why it could not be, because this is one of the best and most advanced uh, exposure techniques that any camera has. The first one to use this was a Finnish uh, commercial photographer Pekka Potka who made a blog post about it and I picked it up from there and but uh, Pekka has uh, deleted his uh, blog because he's uh, retired now and is doing something else. He's still doing some photography but as a hobby. These settings won't affect the raw image itself. These settings are only made because then the image that you see on the LCD is as close as possible to a perfect exposure. So remember, it does not affect the raw image because that has been some kind of a debate in the other video that I made two and a half years ago that people are saying that why you do this because it doesn't affect the raw, but it will affect the JPEG that you see on the LCD on, or on the EVF and that's why we make these settings. So you need to follow and make every setting uh, as, uh, as I say so that you get the perfect exposure. Of course, the first thing you have to do is go to the shooting menu one and choose RAW as your image format. Next step is to choose muted from the picture mode. Set contrast and saturation to minus two. All the other settings can be set as default. And then go to the special menu D3 and histogram settings. Press OK and set to highlight and shadow values. I have set highlight to 253 and shadows to two. You can use 255 and 0 if you, if you like. I like to have a little safety on both ends so that nothing will definitely not be overexposed because if you clip the highlights, they're gone and the image won't look very nice. Shadows, okay, they can be totally black in sometimes. I mean, most cases it doesn't matter. So I wouldn't be worried about the shadow that much. Next, you head up to menu G and turn keep warm colors off. And from the same menu, choose the color space Adobe RGB. You should also have the live boost off so you see exactly the image 
that comes out in, ex in exposure wise. Otherwise, if you have the light boost on, it will boost up and the image won't look the same as the final image that the camera records. So keep the light boost off. In this one lies one of the biggest advantages of mirrorless cameras over DSLRs. With a mirrorless camera, when you and in Olympus, when you have the light boost off, you see the image as exposure-wise exactly the way the camera records it. With DSLRs, you see the picture like your eye sees it, and it is different than the camera sees it. So this is one of the biggest, biggest advantages of mirrorless. And the next step is very important. With these settings, you make sure that actually can see the red and blue color on your uh, LCD or EVF. If you miss this, then this, all the other settings won't help you. Go to the special menu I and info settings. Go to the custom one or custom two and make sure that the highlight and shadow is checked. The other ones doesn't have to be checked. If you want to use the histogram, you can, but it's not necessary because you have the flag colors, which will tell you if the image is underexposed or overexposed. So no need to use the histogram, but of course you can if you want. And the next step is to set the camera button so that it's very easy to correct the exposure. The dial function settings can be found in the special menu B. I set the back dial to change the exposure compensation and the front dial to change either aperture or shutter speed. It depends on if I shoot on aperture priority or shutter priority mode. But I always have the exposure compensation under my thumb, so it's easy to change the plus or minus on my exposure. And if I see a lot of red on my LCD or EVF, I will turn the exposure down and to see the red flag color to disappear. I'm not so worried about, as I said earlier, about the blue color because that's underexposed. If there's nothing that I want to show in the, in the shadow areas, then I don't mind. It can be zero. And this way I can see the correct exposure even before I press the shutter button. So I don't need to chimp to check out the exposure. I know it's spot on. And setting up your Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II this way, you can be sure that all of your exposures are just perfect. And you capture all the data that the sensor can. But remember, when you look at the image in Lightroom, it might look a little washed out. But no problem, you just take the exposure dial and it will affect the midtones and make the image a little bit darker and it will punch up the colors too. And you, sometimes you might want to add a little contrast, but that's, of course, it depends, the contrast side, it depends on your style of images you, you want to make. And also by darkening the image a bit, you will get a better image quality because it will reduce noise also. Since we made a lot of changes to JPEGs, do not use these settings if you only shoot JPEGs. This applies only to RAW images. With these settings, you will get the perfect RAW image and a very crappy JPEG. And also when adjusting the exposure from the back dial, it's wise to set the exposure step value to one third of a stop so that you can change as little as possible the exposure if you need. So one stop would be too much, but one third of a stop is usually enough. As I said, we were affecting the JPEG, not the raw image. And JPEGs usually are lower bit depth, so when you see a small amount of red on your screen, it doesn't matter, you can still recover it in raw image. So, so no problem if there's a little hint of red. Usually one third or two thirds of a stop plus after the red disappears. It's usually good because you can recover the highlights from your raw image, even though the JPEG might be a little overexposed. After you have made all these settings, assign them to custom mode C1 or C2 or C3, whichever you like. I always have them on C1, so when I turn the camera on and I put C1, I always have the same settings on my camera, which is really good. I really recommend doing those settings because Olympus is the only camera that have this ability to do these settings. You can set the white point exactly where you want it to be and same goes with the black point. No other camera brand is so advanced on exposure settings than Olympus is. But let's see the other settings that I find very useful. From button functions in, me in special menu B, I set the FN1 button to be SOVF. This will make the EVF work like an old-fashioned mirror in a DSLR. You see the image the way your eye sees it. And if you want to use it, it's all up to you. I usually don't have it on, but why I set it on FN1 is that I do some image making in a studio and usually I dim the lights so that it's quite dark in the studio and then 
S O B F is very handy. It make me a lot easier to see. I usually don't use back focus method. I know a lot of people do, but somehow I've never got used to it. That's why I have assigned focus peaking to A A L to A F L button. I use quite a lot of old manual vintage lenses, and it's hard to focus with them. And by pressing the A E L button, I can see the focus peaking colors on the screen, so I know that the image is really sharp. But of course, if you use M Zuiko lenses, you don't need to press this. You just have to turn the focus picking on, and then it's always on if you do manual focusing on your M Zuiko lenses. You can turn it on from the special menu A3, and the settings are in the special menu D3. Yes, I know. I don't understand why these settings could not be in the same place. That's this is what I said that sometimes the Olympus menus are quite messy, and you can get lost. I have set the F and lateral to be my power button. I find it very easy to just turn the camera on with one hand. I don't need the other hand. I just turn it on with my thumb and I'm good to go. And it would be nice if the regular power button could be assigned to something else when F and lateral is assigned to be a power switch button. In the picture mode settings, I only have muted activated. I never use the other picture mode, so I might as well turn them off. But of course, if you like to use the other picture modes just let them be activated from special menu i you can set up the grid settings on your camera my grid settings are like this the grids help you to make composition with your images that's why i have them on you can always turn them off if if you don't like them and you can also change the color of the grid i have it on default i have the mode guide off but i can press the info button to see if i don't remember what and which menus are doing what i always turn off the beep sound i think they are very annoying i have the noise reduction off this setting can be found in the special menu e1 if i need to reduce the noise i will do it in post in lightroom it works better in my opinion and don't forget to set up the copyright settings in your camera there's also a video about that so if you don't know how to do it please watch that video after you watch this I have two M1 Mark II bodies. That's why I have set the older camera to be camera A and the older one to be camera B, so they will have different file names when they record the image. They never get mixed up. I have also turned the EVF auto switch off. I use this button to toggle between EVF and LCD. I find the sensor around the EVF to be a little annoying. I don't like the sensor to turn the LCD off when I don't want it to be turned off. It's many times when you make images on a tripod. I like to sometimes watch it from the LCD and if I go too close to the camera or my hand goes too close to the camera or the, or the sensor, the LCD turns off and it turns on the EVF. I like to use this button instead. Then I have set the EVF style to style 2. On this way all the information about the exposure values are below the image. I don't like to have so much text and symbols on my image. I also have menu recall on. This way when I press the menu button I end up in the same place that I left off last time I used the menu. Because sometimes the Olympus menus can be a little hard to remember. In the special menu J2 I have the PBH battery. This way when I use the battery grip on my Olympus OMD N1 Mark II, the camera uses the battery in the battery grip first and then automatically switches to the other battery in the body if the battery in the battery grip rains out. And usually then I can just change the battery without taking the whole grip off. This is also a very good place to check out the health of your batteries. And remember again, when you have made all these changes to your settings, be sure to assign them to a custom mode, so that you can always come back by choosing the right custom mode from the mode dial in top of your camera. As you can see, there are lots and lots of settings that you can change on your Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. And this applies to all other Olympus cameras too. My examples was from, from EM1 Mark II. Some might say that this is even too much. I think it's a very good thing because there are as many style of using the camera as there are photographers. And as I said in the beginning, these are my settings and I have customized them to my type of shooting, my type of style my way of doing things but of course you might have a different way and if this helps you to find your own way i'm glad then this video was worth making but i know that there are a lot of people that have different 
different kinds of uh, settings that they like to use. So please tell me and the viewers what are your favorite settings and how you want to set up your Olympus camera. There might be something that I have missed, so please let us know in the comments below. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now. Mm -hmm.